Uh, so far, we talked about relative velocity between two points of a rigid body. And before that, we talked about uh, finding velocity and acceleration of different points on the rigid body when, uh, when it's rotating about a fixed point. Uh, in this part, uh, instantaneous center of zero velocity, which uh, we are going to call it just instantaneous center, uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon which is going to be very helpful and a useful tool to analyze kinematic of a rigid body. Mathematically, we can prove whenever you have a rigid body which is moving and rotating uh, in plane, there is always, always, at any specific time, you can find one point on the rigid body and only one point on the rigid body which the velocity of it is equal to zero. And how we can find that, I'm not going to prove it for you, but there is this rigorous proof for that. But um, the method is this. If you consider two points on the rigid body, like A and B, and let's say the velocity of point A is this, velocity of A and velocity of point B is in a different direction like this velocity of B if you know these two directions the direction of velocity of these two points that's enough to find the instantaneous center of zero velocity how this is the way to go you need to draw two perpendicular lines to these two velocities at A and B. Velocity of A is this, so if I draw a perpendicular line to it, we're gonna have this line. If you do the same thing for point B, draw a perpendicular line to the velocity of B. This is perpendicular to this, and this is perpendicular to velocity of B. These two, uh, are gonna cross in one point. This point of the same rigid body, it doesn't have to be exactly on that, physically on that body. If you extend this body to infinite, then point C um, belongs to this rigid body too. Velocity of this point is gonna be equal to zero. It has to be zero. We can prove that. And we call this point instantaneous center of zero velocity. Instantaneous center, for short. It is like the whole rigid body at this moment is rotating about point C, right? That's, that's the pro property of the instantaneous center. If you find the instantaneous center in that moment, all the points on this rigid body is going to rotate at this moment about point C. It is like, for example, if you extend this rigid body, this rigid body is pinned to the ground at point C only at this time, only at this moment, and everything is going to rotate about this point. So if the angle of velocity of uh, this rigid body is omega, then velocity of A Just imagine every, uh, this rigid body is pinned to the ground at point C. And you know the equation for that case, the equations for the velocity. Velocity of A is going to be R times omega, and R here is CA. And you can write this for any other point on this rigid body. For example, point B, velocity of B is going to be CB the distance of that point from the center of rotation times omega. If you want to find the velocity of any other point of this rigid body, let's say, for example, point D, how you can find the velocity of that point if you know uh, the center of rotation or its center your center, you need to draw a line to this point and the velocity of this point, point D, is going to be perpendicular to it. 
and the magnitude of the velocity is going to be its distance from the center of rotation, instantaneous center, CD, times that omega. Omega is the angular velocity of this rigid body. So uh, sometimes in some problems, it is quite easy to find the center of rotation, the instantaneous center. If you if you be able to find the uh, center of rotation, you can do a lot of different things. For example, if you know, uh, let's say we know the velocity of A, and we found point C. By dividing the velocity to AC, you are going to be able to find omega. Look at this equation. Omega is velocity of A divided by CA. So if I know the center of rotation, if I know velocity of any point in this rigid body, I can divide that velocity to the distance of that point from the instantaneous center to find omega. Or if I know omega and if I know the center of rotation, I can find the velocity of any other point on that rigid body. Like for example, point D that we talked about it. <clears throat> so it is quite useful. Uh, in some problems, it is easy to find this. So it's better actually to use this method to find the center of uh, instantaneous center and use it to analyze the velocities. But in some problems, it's quite difficult to find the instantaneous center. So it's not going to be really handy in those type of problems. It's better to use uh, the related velocity equations between different points of the rigid body. So um, there are some small points about, um, about finding the instantaneous center of uh, zero velocity. Sometimes you have the velocity of different points like this, so by drawing the perpendicular lines to those velocities, you can find point C. But sometimes it's not that easy. For example, let's say um, in a rigid body, we have the velocity of two points of it. Like, let's say this is A and this is B. And this is the connecting line between them. And velocity of both of A and B are in the same direction. This is velocity of A and this is velocity of B. Now, how can I find the instantaneous center here? If I go with the previous method, I need to draw a line perpendicular to the velocity of A, which is going to be this line. If I draw a perpendicular line to the velocity of B at B, it's going to be exactly the same line. So I got two uh, exactly the same lines, and I don't know where they are crossing each other, so how can I find the instantaneous center? For this case, we can prove we need to know uh, the magnitude of the velocities too. If you know the magnitude of the velocities at point A and B, we need to connect these velocities together and the center of rotation or the instantaneous center is going to be here. <clears throat> In the previous one, we didn't need to know the magnitude of the velocity. We just needed the directions. So we could draw, uh, we could draw these uh, perpendicular lines. But here, it's not going to work. We need to know the magnitude of the velocity Two. Or uh, in a similar case, if I have a rigid body like this again, uh, let's say velocity of A is upward and velocity of B is downward, but they are parallel. We have similar case, right? If you draw the perpendicular lines to the velocity of A and B, both of them are going to be the same line. So we don't know where they are crossing each other. In this case, again, similar to the previous one, we need to connect um, the endpoints of these velocities, these vectors together. The crossing point of perpendicular line and this line is going to be the center of rotation. So this is going to be point C. So again, um, the instantaneous center, um, every, everything on that rigid body, all the points of that rigid body 
in that moment is going to rotate about this point C. And another point is the center of rotation can change at any moment, usually it changes at any moment. At this time it's here, maybe a moment later when when the direction of the velocity change, it's gonna go, it's gonna be a different point. So instantaneous center, as it is on the name of it, it is instantaneous. It is only for that moment. A moment later, it can be a totally different thing. Okay. And uh, before uh, solving problems using this, I need to add a few points um, about the velocity of different points of a rigid body which are quite useful in solving problems. So um, to explain that, let me start with this. Consider two points of a rigid body, like A and B. Do you think it is possible to have velocity of A to be to the right, and velocity of this point of the same rigid body to be to the left, that one to the right, this one to the left. Is it possible or not? Of course it is not. If I, have, if, I, um, if I move A to the right and B to the left, we are not gonna have a rigid body anymore. It's gonna break from somewhere, right? So it is not possible to have velocity of A and B in this like this. How about having velocity of B to the right but having different velocities for A and B, if the velocities and A, B, they are all on the same line. Again, this is not gonna be possible. You can imagine that, right? A is moving faster than B. So the distance between A and B should change, which is not gonna be possible because we are talking about a rigid body. So these are not possible. So there might be some relationship between velocity of two points. What is that relationship? This is the relationship. Again, consider these two points. Let's say in general, velocity of A is something like this. And velocity of B is in a different direction, different magnitude like this. But is it possible to have these two velocities? for A and B, it is possible with this condition. The component of the velocity of both of them along the connecting line between them, along AB, must be equal. Otherwise, we are not gonna have rigid body. So mathematically, what's the meaning of that? If I call this angle theta one, if I call this angle theta two, Component of velocity of A along AB is VA cosine, cosine of theta 1. Component of velocity of B along AB is going to be VB cosine of theta 2. This is a constraint. This is the constraint equation between velocity of A and B. Velocity of them, the component of the velocity of these two points along the connecting line, along AB, must be equal. Otherwise, we are not going to have rigid body. The component of the velocity perpendicular to AB, they can be anything. We don't have any constraint on that. And this constraint equation, sometimes it is quite useful to solve some complicated problems, which we are going to see later in examples.